I'm here with Chris at Audio Escape. How are you? Doing good. How are you doing, Warren? I'm good. We have been trying out the 260. I think Eric and I, we're about halfway through trying out on multiple instruments. We're going to do our usual record a song, use it on yep. absolutely everything. I've got to be honest, I have three 165s, which as you know is the same thing, but with a, a variable attack and release. I will say, everybody, I put the auto switch in so it just works like a 160. It sounds just like my units, but better because it doesn't go. Oh, and then die. It's, it's, <laughs> well, it's just, it's just brand new. It just sounds gorgeous. Oh, yeah. All, the, love all it. the circuitry is new. It's like yeah. getting a, an old one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, it's uh, but that, but brand new off the line. You know? Yeah, brand new off the line. Yep. Really, really super impressed. The, the sort of word on the street is all of the engineers that have been using your gear, like everybody loves it. Um, oh. I think the word clone, let's be honest, is overused. 99% of the time when people say clone, what they mean is it looks like the original gear. Yes. Your stuff sounds like it, and so thank you for doing that. Oh. It's funny, it's no accident. It's like between you and, and, and BAE, you know, who, are, who do the Neve stuff. Like, oh, yeah. Oh, you yeah. guys are next door to each other. So, oh, I'm, we're just grateful. We're grateful that you're checking it out. We're, we're grateful that everyone uh, loves what we're doing and we yeah. can grow and yeah. we can uh, provide like a community where people that love music and love making music and make this equipment with us. And so, I, we just couldn't be, couldn't be well, more grateful. Enough honestly. of me praising you. No. You've got the 1178. It's over here. You know, it's funny that you mentioned that because last Sorry. time we were at AES, yep. you were asking, "Are you guys? have you guys ever considered making an 1178? Yep. You didn't know it at the time, but we were already knee deep yep. and, and, and starting to work on it. Yeah. And as you can see, we have it here right at the next show. So, um, I mean, this is the stereo compressor that I grew up on. And I mean, this was like in, in Britain, in the UK, this was like the ultimate stereo room compressor. It could take any generic stereo mics and just make them magical. Yes. Because, you know, back in the golden era of the 80s and stuff like that, there wasn't that many compressors that had pretty decent attack, variable attack and release times. You could get in there and really make that kick and snare pump. This is phenomenal. So when do I get one? So this will be coming <laughs> out. We're hoping late summer, fall yep. area. It's going to yep. be priced about the same as a decomp, around $14.99. That's great. And Having these extra controls, it's you know very yep. traditional, but we just have those simple additions. We we don't try to go too crazy with options because sometimes you go option crazy, then you know certain things get sacrificed. But having a simple blend control, yep. having two filter values, they're sort of discreet. They don't really take away from the aesthetic that was on the. No, original. no, it's amazing. I mean, yeah, it, it it means that if you've got a really good pumping low end and you want that kick to shine in your room mics. You yeah. know, you, you, you can let that stuff pass through yep. and really get some low end out of it. Means, I mean, this could be just like your your whole drum sound. Yes, it really could. And it's so much fun to use. It really yeah. is. Like having that blend control, oh, yeah, you can huge. really just pump. Destroy yeah, it yeah, and then take it. it back. Yep. Yeah. You got it. Yeah. yeah, you know. Yeah, love yeah. it. They are so much fun. And Very exciting. So 1400 and change yep. Yep. is about what one of the reissues cost for a mono unit, that other stereo one. So congrats on the price. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah, and we're able to do that because we sell direct on our website. So we're right. able to, they're like, a lot of people don't understand that. Like, how are they able to do that? And that's how we're able to still, you right. know, have an American workforce, uh, you know, yeah. here on site working and sell it at a reasonable price. That's amazing. Yep. Um, great. And then, of course, we have the uh, 260 over there, which we're going to be doing the video on. So let's go check it out anyway. Hopefully Joe doesn't steal this one. <laughs> He's trying to. He's trying to steal it. All so right. here it is. Here's the 260. Um, Eric and I have already been using this. We're about halfway through a video. I've been traveling so much that I haven't got to finish it. We started before I went to Abbey Road and here we are back here. But it is gorgeous. You did an amazing job on this. Oh, it was it was really fun bringing this one back too. Yeah, the, the VCA, like we talked about last yeah. time, it's just that recreating that was fun in itself. And we just got to a point where we had to go vintage with the parts. We had to just raid the surplus market and we just got thousands and thousands of these vintage bets. And that's, wow. that, that's really, you know. That's a differentiator. If, 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 if it sounds like the original Walt's using original parts. Right, amazing. Congratulations. Why, you know. So remind me on the price. What is it for this? For uh, this is fourteen ninety nine as well. That's right for a pair. Yeah. Yep. That's amazing. Yeah. You know, 
look, we all love vintage equipment, but when you get something that's brand new that sounds just like it for a fraction of the cost. And this was built to last. Like the, the old ones like you're talking about, uh, yeah. like we you alluded to, like they would have these, these little quirks, you know, with the output mute circuit that like if you turn it off, it would have like a popping sound that they would try to limit. And they would have these fets that would die and the whole thing would just tank and it wouldn't work right. on the old 160s. So we just, that doesn't affect audio. So we replaced that with the relay. So it won't yep. die on the user pretty nice. surely. So like nice. that was actually like a huge part of the R&D process was making sure that it's going to last and it's going to work. It could yep. sit on all day here at the trade show and not, you right. know, not take a dive while someone's trying to test it out. Well, those are the two things I cherry picked. Anything else you want to tell us about? Well, let's see. We have this beautiful, lovely spring reverb here. Um, oh, I remember that for last time. Yeah. Yeah. That thing. With and, a full EQ on it and everything. Yep, yep. Yeah. We have that. And then also, I don't know if you got the 6A yet. I think we did it with Joe a little bit yesterday. But okay, good. We have the ASA 6A, which we're bringing this back in a limited fashion because it's so it's like an antique piece here well that's uh, that's uh, mark daniel nelson's great grandfather <laughs> yes he was using his great grandfather was using this back, back then with these old with these old black metal tubes here yeah beautiful so, yeah no so we're bringing back yeah the, the 6a design but we're adding a lot of features to make it more modern amazing yeah having uh, uh, you know just even the release control just having the release recovery mode yeah. the variable such a huge difference in this yeah. design it's like it's a whole different compressor amazing it starts, it starts entering modern territory as soon as you make it faster it just you know i want one yeah uh, pretty I, bad pretty bad all the original tubes tube rectifier amazing it's so much fun having the threshold you guys are artists <laughs> yeah, you gotta have your way to do this. I love it. It's 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 a passion. We just start with what yeah. we're passionate to do, and we work our way back from that. We don't worry about margins and all that stuff. That that's yeah. snooze fest, totally. Like it's, right. this is this is what keeps me up at night. Like you know, just making sure like everything's Amazing. off point. Did I order enough of these tubes? You know, that's it's we love it. You know, so we have all these added features side chain high pass on this you can actually turn down the uh there's just no cynicism in this because they're making something that's true to the original not making it to look like the original yeah yeah and yeah Good work. using the original parts because there's no substitutes for these old tubes yeah like i mean this little tube right here nobody makes this tube yeah look it's at this, amazing like, this little cute tube you know like wow it's like well how many of these did you find oh i got like couple thousand of these you know right right yeah i'm trying to trying to make it so we can make a lot as many as we can yeah some of it's a little tough because it's a very new design right yeah, yeah. And, and so these two tubes it's the balance between these two tubes so it's yeah. so sensitive and you yeah. have to balance them and then of course you made it harder by being able to expand like the release and that so it's it can pump quicker basically so the selection of these two tubes is a lot harder on us so right i guess that should be our new slogan, doing things the harder way, you know, all it feels like some days, but it's it's really fun. It's a labor well, of love. Well, Mark's you know? great-grandfather was happy anyway, so. Yeah, he, yeah. <laughs> I, that's Because you, you know it can't be Mark, because he couldn't grow a mustache like that. No, no. <laughs> Chris, thanks ever so much. Oh, Lord, thank you. I really you. appreciate thank it. Thank you. There'll be a link down below. You can go and check out all of AudioScape's gear. Thank you. Hey, guys, it's Joe. And I'm Amec. And we're here at NAM Day 2. And you know, we just, I think this is the first time we've ever, ever met, I believe. Yes, in yeah. real life. In real life, yes. not on the grams or the whatever. <laughs> so, so far today, this have you been here both days? Just today. Okay, so but I bet you've had several hours to make the rounds. Oh yeah, for sure. Favorite thing so far? Um, Two things, whatever. Okay. Well, Sound Toys, a uh, new plugin that they're coming out with, Super Plate. We just did a thing with them, actually. But that's, I'm really excited. If you haven't checked it out, you've got to check it out. I have not made it to that booth. I've um, got to. And I'm actually really. What's so super about this plate? It'll well, hold more, you know, more potatoes or. Oh, do you mean like a plate reverb? Yeah, plate reverb. Oh, well, see, that's oh, an God. entirely this different guy's thing. A comedian. I I'm, thought I I'm was. I'm getting funny. hungry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big plate. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's really cool. It actually, like, stops the decay it's like a side chain but it doesn't just push it down and bring it back it controls the decay at the end wow um and i'm doing a terrible job of explaining what well, this is so you should talk i'll just to walk over there and see it yeah i'll just walk over there and see um, it that sounds it sounds promising yeah i'm excited um, i have i think i have the sound toys everything bundle so i wonder if i can 
just go download that, you know? Yeah, I think uh, so. There's definitely an update for it. Oh, of man. Of course, there is with Up everything charges. anymore. Well, maybe Warren can get us for free. Everybody loves Warren. Yeah, we can right, say, Warren, hey, uh, we know we'll Warren. Up. We'll do a video or something. Here, take this for free. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But anyway, so what else? Anything else? I mean, I'm also really excited about IK Media that we're in front of right now yeah. and uh, their precision loudspeakers. I think that they're really great and they're getting into, you know, the Atmos Arena. That's all. I actually just got walked over here by a friend that does Atmos. I mean, that's like the biggest part of his living now. And he was wanting me to see this. That's why I'm standing here right now. So that's... Um, Interesting, but yeah, he said that you can get into that most thing more affordable here than just about anywhere else. And he was talking about the the, the quality of it. He's like, dude, it sounds pretty, you know, based on the if your room sizes are right, it can sound pretty amazing. So I'm gonna that's what I'm gonna check out too. For sure. So yeah. 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 Well, what is? Uh, tell me something I've got to check know, out. Can I be boring and say something that already exists for a few years now, but Absolutely. I'm still pumped about? So. In this past year was the first time that I ever got my hands on a uh, uh, the SSL Fusion. Oh, I own one. Okay, I knew it was awesome. I mean, everybody that I respect has one, but I didn't have one. About six months ago or so, I finally got to pull a mix on a console that had it built in. First time I pushed Vintage Drive, I think it's called Vintage Drive, I it think is, is the yeah, button. Yeah. I was like, oh my God, have to own it. So I haven't bought it yet, but I think, you know, after playing with it a little bit more, I'm gonna go home and get on the old sweet water or something and have to have to pull the trigger. Pull the yeah, trigger. you've yeah. got to. Um, that's a that's an amazing box. I, I just everything. So many, so many great choices. So many that, great that choices. EQ is cool. Um, that the transformer engage if you're driving into it is cool. Um, let's see what else, man. I tell you, I saw a have you been to the Heritage, Heritage Audio booth? I haven't been there yet. OK, no. they've got a new thing called the Tube Sessor, I think it's called. OK, it's a so it's a it's a tube compressor, but it um, kind of, dare I say, it kind of reminded me of a CL1B. I don't think it's trying to clone that, OK, but it reminded me of that because of the attack time fix versus manual kind of thing. And um, anyway, I don't know. I may have to I may have to get a demo of that because I was I was dialing in some acoustic guitar uh stems at the head playing back and it was like that does that optical thing you know that i'm looking for sure. but with a lot of flexibility that maybe my, my la2a don't have on its own you know because it's it does one thing so i'll probably have to get a demo on that but that's two of the things that i think i'm pretty excited about right now yeah i mean hey lots of cool stuff at nam yeah. big geeks everywhere <laughs> and, uh, and short geeks time. like me yeah i mean i think i don't know <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, hey, nice to meet you in person, Great Allie. to meet you in person, right, too, Joe. Thank you. Cut! What's up, guys? I'm AMAC with Produce Like a Pro here at Sound Toys with my guy, Tony. And we're going to look at their new plug-in coming out next month, Super Plate. Woo! All right, Tony, tell me about it. This is my favorite plug-in and thing at NAMM this year, and I can't wait for him to show you how it works. Thank you so much for coming. And a lot of our fans have been Little Play fans for a while now. And Little Play was based off of this AMT 140 plate that's also included in Super Play as part of the package. So we got five different plates, okay? We've got AMT 140, Gold Foil 240, Otacon, a Nashville plate, um, Echo Plate 3, which was designed by Jim Cunningham at Programming Technologies back in the 1980s, Stocktronics RX 4000, a plate from Stockholm, that sounds absolutely brilliant on the high end. So not only do you have your typical EMT 140 that we already know from Little Plate, this also has four other plates, so you get five in one. And of course, we also modeled the amp section off of the EMT. Right here, we have a tube saturation, and we also have a solid state um, compressed saturation, as well as clean, so all of the plates can be used in conjunction with the different saturation styles to create further sonic tweaking. And just like Little Plate, we have a variable half a second decay all the way up to infinity. So it can go crazy and create some really interesting sonic scapes. And a lot of users will be super happy to see that we have pre-delay built in. And this is going to be amazing for those that want a quick separation between the dry signal and the reverb. So it's going to be great for vocalists, for example. 
for sure. I mean, yeah. that was definitely one of my things about Little Plate, which is one of my favorite reverbs, yeah. but the mix knob, or I'm sorry, the pre-delay knob, I was like, ah, oh, I wish I had it. So I'm super yes. pumped to have it now. And also, on the modulation side, now we can actually change the variable LFO from 0.2 hertz all the way up to 8 hertz. So, so now dope. it's even more places to tweak the sonic quality of the reverb itself. And the bright and shiny center section here under the tweak menu that you can click via a button shows our brand new EQ. So we have an EQ at the output that only affects the reverb itself, not the dry signal. So we can roll off some lows and highs, change the slope, as well as two fully parametric bands that you can use to work with the EQ. And if you hold down control, you can do a bit more surgical tweaks and change the cue as you like. So this is super intuitive, super easy to use, and it saves you the trouble of having another plugin afterwards, right? For sure. Oh yeah. And check out the auto decay feature. This the is the best, coolest part about to happen, guys. So a lot of times when you're working with something like a drum beat, you might want to add a compressor after the reverb that's side-chained to the rhythm itself. That way you're kind of helping the reverb tail breathe with the music together. Right here with Auto Decay, I simply turn the threshold down to where I think necessary, and I just turn the target down to where I want it to be. So what happens is we start with the four second tail, for example, and as the music modulates, it turns the decay time down from four seconds down to half a second. This is great, super easy to use, and sounds amazing for cleaning up like that reverb tail, preventing it from getting into the transient of a drum, for example. And it's built in, very easy to modulate with the recovery button, so you get a pumpier sound, faster release, versus a slower release. And of course, last but not the least, we have a stereo width modulation here. So if you're into kind of a classic mono play sound, just pull it to zero. And if you want a super wide in stereo, play on the 100. Also definitely one yeah. of my favorite things about it. And this plugin will be coming out next month, May 2023, available for retail at $149. And it will probably have introductory price. So definitely sign up for um, email listing at soundtoys.com. And also, if you own Little Plate, the upgrade pricing into Super Plate is only 60 bucks. And then you'll be able to have both Little Plate and Super Plate. And while you buy Super Plate, and if you own Effectraft, for example, now Super Plate can be used in Effectraft to complete the entire effect chain that you have with a great reverb plugin. Amazing. So yeah, it's gonna be amazing next month. Check it out, check us out. Cool guys, I'm super excited for Super Plate and to use it on vocals and drums and everything you can. Make sure you guys check out Sound Toys and go get this plugin. Thanks, Thank Tony. Thank you so much. What's up, guys? It's Amac back again with Produce Like a Pro here at Oak Sound, and we're going to talk about the Sue Live plugin. Before I was a mix engineer, I was a front of house engineer, so I'm really excited to hear about it. And we're going to have an awesome giveaway of two Sue 2 plugins. I'm here with Ali and Chant. And yeah, let's get into it. Tell me what right. it's about. It's been a long, 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 long dream of mine and us to realize the technology of Sooth for live sound and, and to make it available for live sound engineers. So that's what we've been working on for like three and a half years now, trying to just make that happen. First, finding a proper platform for it, which ended up being the SXL because that's the, the best, plug to run, uh, best platform to run live plugins on. Sure. And, um, yeah, three and a half years, it's a long time. It took a lot of time to just squeeze the latency out of it, basically. So it runs at one millisecond latency. So to make it available for, to, to make it possible to use it on monitors and, and on it, basically any channel you want. You get 54 mono instances or 36 stereo instances for one HDX card inside the console. So you can basically use it on anything and everything if you want to. We've uh, optimized it for VSXL, obviously. Um, it, it's supporting all the touch gestures and touch screen interaction mouse, everything like that. We have a ton of presets from uh, uh, like the best front of house engineers like Mark Carroll and Sully. Sure. Uh, it's been already, it's been a beta for a year. It's been, we spent a lot, a lot of time just refining it and making sure it's solid and, and sort of behaves in every situation. And it's been used in shows like Muse and Rage Against the Machine already. So it's, a, it's been a it's been a quite a ride for the past year. 
That's uh, that's awesome. Does it work? You know, basically exactly the same as yeah. Soothe in the Box. Close enough. Yeah. It's a. Uh, it's not quite the same because live sound has its like own requirements. Like sure. when you think about live sound situation, you typically have. Um, you have more dynamics in the in the sort of performance because the studio environment is always going to be more controlled. So it's a, it's more a bit uh, it, it acts a bit differently in regards to dynamics. It's more level dependent. It's actually like very level dependent because we found out that going like like to like using something like Soothe Two wouldn't just cut it in live sound. So it sure. was it, so it's a, it's a bit different. Like it's being designed from from the ground up to actually suit the live sound engineers' workflow. We try to sort of make sure that we've cut down some of the free, uh, parameters to okay, we combine selective now, yeah. sharpness. Mm -hmm. We've, we've uh, optimized uh, the speed and, and sort of refined that as well, going through use cases and sort of the typically use cases that you need in live sound environments and sort of uh, honing it down into those two. So just basically to make it as fast as possible to use. Sure, so would you, like I see it's on vocals and you can put it on that stuff, yeah. but would you put it on like, you know your main outs. Yeah, you can do and that. Stuff yeah. like that. I, I, that is yeah, where I find yeah, yeah, it would be like yeah. super, super yeah. helpful. You can, um, like, if you, especially if you dial the speed down and detail down. It, it once you go like underneath three in detail, it starts to become more like a multiband, like a smart multiband compressor. So you could use that sort of just as a as a replacement for your your graphical EQ. So sort of slowly honing in into the sort of uh, compensating for different, like uh, if you have a honky mid-range in, in total, just to sort of smo slowly smooth that out. But also to sort of go in, like if you want to, you can also sort of hold, like take the detail all the way up and, and start poking around things. Sure, you know, all those well. annoying yeah. feedback frequencies, yeah, exactly, right? You yeah. just really cut in there. Yeah. Well, that's super dope, bro. Congratulations Thank on you. it coming out. Really excited to see yeah. what it does for you. Look for the giveaway down below. And uh, yeah, that's all I got. So I'm with Ryan, try it all, but how are you? Good, good to see you again. Good to be seen. What do you have that's new? Well, a number of things. Okay. Um, first off, our S SM1 speaker mount has okay. changed app mouse, but there was a call for a smaller version. Yeah. So this is UM1, this is universal mount. Uh, it doesn't need the wall mount, but it works better with the wall mount. Um, it's got a face plate that fits most speakers. Yeah. Um, so this is a really nice $99 replacement or addition yeah. to the full professional mount. Right. There was a media hole right away when I came onto media released their MTM. Yeah. And no one had a mount for it. Okay. So immediately I made the MTM adapter. Wow. So now the IK Multimedia is totally mountable with a true swivel yeah. with degrees and locking, and uh, that is uh, in production right now. Fantastic. So that came out quickly, and again, now you can take, again, a speaker. Yeah. Slide it right in place, get all your adjustments, and lock nice. in place. So that's the tr the MTM. Nice. Nice. These are the guys, if you need a, anything mounted, hooked up in any way, shape, or form, try it out, but it doesn't. It's funny, I mean, not funny, but we've been to so many companies in the last couple of days and everybody's got your, your stands now. Yeah. Pretty awesome. It is, it's, it's good, it's a good What's thing. this I see over here? So, Tell us about this, Ryan. Uh, triad stands. We have demand, it's, you know, desktop, 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 podcast, yeah. podcast, podcast, podcast. So I took a triad and kind of miniaturized it. Feel the weight. Oh yeah, wow, some st sturdy. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. So it's got a cool little thing here. You go like that, like that, like that. And now it's a triad stand. Very and nice. like triad stands, the legs can articulate and create your yeah. angles and your footprint. Yeah. Now for how small it is, let's get an idea of how strong it is. Okay. Put those in your pocket and we're gonna go like that. <laughs> I was stealing these while you weren't you looking. Were. So. Hey, how's it going? Wow. Mountain Mike. That's pretty awesome. That's pretty awesome. So very stable. Very nice indeed. And compact and you know, when you're done yeah. again, pop it out, put it away. 
put it in your bag and go away. Yeah, I'll put it in my bag. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> now, <Yeah>. also, <laughs> cameras, lights, laptops, yeah. phones. It's fantastic on iPads. So next. What is this? This is called I.O. Rack. Okay. And again, everything we do is I.O. Yeah. But now you can put this between two rack spaces yeah. on your console yeah. or on your rack live. Yeah. And this could be a mic, a light, a boom, a yeah. camera, anything right between two rack spaces. And that's where you're working anyway. So now you, if you want to film yourself, big camera's there. You want a mic for talk back, click it in. Yep. You've got a talk back mic. Wow. Very simple. And again, everything about Triad Orbit is these are all tools. Right. For the Triad Orbit IO users. Yeah. So let's call IO Rack. Right. Uh, next, we're going smaller and smaller. Yeah. This is called IO 2C. Yeah. Um, this is a very small clamp, but very powerful jaws. Yeah. But what's interesting about it, it's nice in a stand. Yeah. Nice on a thin spot. Yeah. But this little spot right there yeah. can go as small as that little wire yeah. right there. So it's just another clamp to put in your toolbox yeah. for those tight spaces. Yeah. And it's very powerful. Wonderful. Yep. That's pretty amazing. Yeah. Another just small, small object. But as you know, these are all great. This is absolutely fantastic. This is where right. it all starts. So wait there, is there anything special about this? Well, first off again, pick it up. Yep. Jesus, Mary and Joseph. Yes. There's some, uh, building some muscles yep. here. Exactly. Yeah. And the legs with that weight allow you to articulate the stands yep. into several angles. That could be on a stairway. Yeah. That could be on a stage. Yeah. Also reduce the footprint and put that in a real tight place. Yeah. And you didn't lose the ballast at right. all. So with the touch of the foot, yeah, that's back into place. And like everything, I.O. Yeah. Booms drop in, and the booms give you 360 by 180 of full right. motion. And then at the microphone, same thing. And as an engineer, we always profess, move the mic yeah. before you grab EQ. Yeah. That makes all the difference in the world. I agree, fantastic. So what are we doing for a giveaway? Because I hear we're doing a giveaway, Ryan. How about that? That is amazing. Okay, thanks, I, I won it. <laughs> no, I'm not going to win it. That's I do actually have already have the stands. T301 M2 package. Perfect. So we're giving that as a giveaway. How much is this worth? About 340. 340. Yeah. Nice. Amazing. There's a reason why everybody is using their stands because they are bulletproof and they're amazing. That's why we use them. So Ryan, thanks ever so much for that. There well, will be a link down below where you can win this beautiful stand. Great. And congratulations on all the new products. Thank you. Always yeah. good to see you, man. Great to be seen. Hey. <laughs> Great to see you. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Matt Lang here. We're at Pioneer, and there is some new toys for us to check out. We have the DJM A9. Now, Matt, I know you are, uh, are a fan of the V10. I am. Well, the A9 is bringing in some of that sound quality. Okay. So it's a four-channel mixer. This is replacing our industry standard DJM 900 Nexus 2. Sure. So guys who are walking into the club have been familiar with this format, this layout, for decades. This, this is just taking go. everything that we've had in the mixer and upgrade. There is no changer for them. They'll walk up, they'll use it, the end. They'll know exactly yeah. how to use this, right. but we've right. added some cool new stuff. So first of all, if you and I were DJing together, yep. we could each have our own headphone queue. So that is handy. Two queuing buses. That, that is extremely handy. So yep. for back to back, so you can uh, you can each hear and prompt, you know, queue your own audio up. And so then, oh yeah, phone speed right there, the phone's on the top. Cool. Separate yep. volume control. And hey, we're Very in the in. booth. Yeah. I, I think it's a little bit too bass heavy because they've given us a couple of double 18 stacks. Yep, yep. We've got booth EQs now. Great. So turn things very, down, very make handy. the adjustments as necessary. Yep. But one of the coolest new things on this mixer, the color effect snobs have got a center lock feature. Now you're looking at it going, okay, what does that mean? Well, you know, normally you can adjust your knob back well, and forth. It would click in. You got your filter and you've got yeah. a little detent at the top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, you're sweeping around, you're having some fun, you right. slightly overshoot it. Sure. And then you load up your next track and you can't figure out why there's no bass. See, that's, I mean, it's funny because like, because I toured as a, basically a techno DJ really for 12 years. So when I would work on a Pioneer, which I often had to because like clubs just always had a 900. Yep. 
So I would just always like trigger finger happy, like just never keeping it on ever. Uh, okay, it was like, okay. I'd use that as an effect yep. and then I hit it off. And that was actually, to be honest, that was my favorite feature that you could do with a Pioneer. Right. Because it was just really easy to create those cool like transitions with a lot of tension and then come back with all your weight super easy. Drop it up. Yeah. Well, what we've done now is you've added center lock. So when you turn this on, what happens is the knob stops at the 12 o'clock position with resistance. As soon as you let it go, you're able oh, to wow. push past it, but it allows you to basically jam on to that one spot. So if you're going back and forth to the 12 o'clock position, it stops there every time. That's clever. And then you can, yeah. you can rotate through. So that, that's a very handy feature. It's a mechanical yeah. feature that's in here. So that is by far one of my favorite new things of right. the night of the A9. Very but cool. we've done some additional stuff. So you can see on yep. this new mic strip that we've got down the side here, yep. we've got the two mic inputs, but we've got new mic effects that are dedicated as opposed to having to assign your beat effects. So you've got an echo, pitch changer, a megaphone, but yeah. also a separate reverb. So a lot of control here, but not only that, do you ever broadcast out of your studio? Do you stream? Yeah, once in a while. Yeah. So guys who are in the studio might want to use a condenser mic. Right. And I have 48 power, 48 volts. Phantom there power you go. is right here. Oh, so, the old ones didn't take Phantom, did they? No, you had to use Right, you used box. the 58. Yeah, right. So now yeah. we've got Phantom power built in. Right. But we've also got Bluetooth. Okay. I know you're not the kind of guy who's going to take a request from somebody in the event, but maybe you just wanted to play something while you're warming up. I was always the kind of guy that, you know, this DJ did not take requests kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, you know, and I, I'm still not on board personally with like everything needing to have Bluetooth, but oh. I understand as like, an option for like a home listening environment, being able to like pipe it over or something like that. That exactly. to me makes total sense. Assignable to any channel. Right. But on top of that, we've got two USB connections yeah. here that have got USB. B and C. Right, so we're looking forward right. to the future with USB C. Yep, yep. And of course, those are assignable to any of the channels. Necessary. And what's cool is if you're using a DAW or multi channel like Ableton, you've got discrete outputs for each channel. Right. So you yeah. can record your, your mix separately on all those channels back right. in. Right, right. Just out of the USB output. So, yeah. Do you use effects boxes? Once in a while, yeah. So, send and return on this has been enhanced. We've got a great send and return that's assignable back to any channel, right? As well as the USB. So, if you're using audio bus devices for an iOS, like our RMX 1000 app on the sure, iPad, right, right, right. Okay. We've got an option there. Yeah. And the beat effects has got some great improvements. So, not only do we have the, the, the frequency selectors for the beat effects, but now if you're picking your channel, you can just directly assign it to the channel. You can see on the channel which one is assigned for the beat effect simply by pressing the channel button. You don't have to use that dial anymore. Yeah, that's better. And and the big screen yeah. shows you a lot of parameters here. You have additional features that will show up in here, like a tape delay, for example. Yep. Normally, if you're going to delay, it's okay, that's cool. Dial it in, you hit the button. But if you want the tape delay, you've got the X pad to control those as well. Cool. So a lot of really cool features in addition to improved sound on the new DJM A9. So you took a basically a mixer, and that was already the industry standard. Yep. And you made it better. But that's exactly what we did. We didn't want to confuse people or, or nope. draw it too far from the, the norm because I, we've had the industry standard for so long. Right. What if can you not, do to improve it? Yeah, if it's not broken, don't fix it. And you didn't fix it, you just improved it. Exactly. So, bravo. Well, well done. Thank you. People will love it. <laughs> I hope so. I, I'm sure they will. So, nice. Hi, everybody. We're with Colin at Voyage Audio, and he's going to tell us all about this ambisonic microphone. Yeah. That you designed. I'm the designer. Okay, good. Then you should know all about this. Yeah. So what, <laughs> what we have here is an eight capsule microphone okay. that's doing second order ambisonics. Um, what's the difference between, what's the second order? Explain well, it to a dumb yeah, person like Yeah, myself. sure. Well, second order ambisonics is going to capture the sound field uh, more precisely. Right. And it's also going to enable you to do things like higher order pattern control. So right. with, with a first order ambisonic mic, you might be able to create a cardioid pattern roughly but with a higher order mic, you're going to be able to create a tighter pattern. Um, okay. And you're also going to be able to do things like go to Dolby Atmos with a lot more realism. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. Well, and wonderful. So, yeah. so this comes with a software to analyze the information that's being recorded, yes? Yeah, correct. Um, so this microphone is actually runs on a Dante network. Okay. Um, so there's a single connection for uh, Ethernet cable here. Right. And it is powered by PoE. Okay. Um, and internally, there's a, 
a high quality analog front end with that core PGA, Sirius Logic analog to yeah. digital converter, and there's actually a DSP embedded in the microphone itself. Wow. So for broadcast out- A lot going on in this little yeah, device. Yeah, yeah, and it gets warm. As you can see, there's a big heat sink on the back here. Oh yeah. We're under the air conditioning, but yeah, the I heat sink's doing yeah. its job. Yeah. yeah. Um, there's a DSP, so in broadcast applications, like for example, they use this at the NBA All-Star Game, you're actually yep. able to feed um, a Atmos surround bed from the microphone itself down the Dante, right. and that's gonna be your sound bed um, for surround. But we have a lot, we have a full controller for the Dante microphone over the Dante right. network. Um, so if we wanna step see over this, the computer. See the software, yeah. So we have two components here. We have this a piece of software, and this controls the microphone itself on the Dante network. Yep. And when you click through here, this changes the mode of the internal DSP processing. Okay. So now it's sending 7.1 down the Dante network instead of just the unprocessed signals. Now it's doing pattern control over the Dante network. So instead of an eight channel, eight channels, this is just a regular stereo microphone here. Now it's okay. a cardioid microphone. Okay. So the highest quality is always going to be with the unprocessed signals here. Okay. okay. And so what you're going to do with that is bring it into a DAW. Here we're um, showing Logic Pro. Okay. Um, because it's really nice. They have the Dolby Atmos renderer built into it. I know, it. isn't that crazy? Um, yeah, great value. So what you can do is you get the eight channels in here, and then I have our Dolby Atmos uh, matrix going out at 7.1.2, and you're able to actually uh, move the mic and steer it around the sound field, aim it in different directions. Okay. We also have virtual mic output here, and you're able to change the polar pattern. Like I was saying, you can go up to um, you know second order polar patterns, so tighter cardioid patterns. You can so is this individually, but this is controlling every mic, every element of the microphone? It it's a good question, and a lot yeah. of people ask this question. Yeah, yeah. So the software takes the yeah. eight channels in from yeah. each capsule, yeah. and it uses all of those to synthesize the output. Okay. So it needs all eight of those capsules to make the, that cardioid pattern, okay. to make that stereo pattern. Okay. Without all eight of those channels, it wouldn't be able to actually derive that pattern. And so we actually take this microphone into an anechoic chamber yeah. and create measurements which take into account the capsule spacing and the mechanical characteristics. Mm -hmm. And that's why a lot of people say, well, isn't it going to be really phasey or something when, I, when you have eight, eight capsules around there? But no, it sounds incredibly natural and if there's right. one word i would could describe the sound of this it would be very natural yeah i mean when i was a kid i used the cow rex so I, I, yeah you know, so was... i mean this is like the next level they had yeah. the, they had the old little analog box totally. and stuff and yeah. and all of that so um so yeah in a nutshell that's kind of what we're phasey doing phasey is one of those words that people like to sort of throw around <laughs> oh yeah it's very phasey yeah yeah i, I understand um, no this is incredible yeah how much is it um, the Dante microphone is twenty eight ninety nine USD, yeah. and the uh, USB microphone is eight ninety nine. And what does the USB do? So the USB microphone is uh, same style array. Yeah. There's a there's a head basket on this one, um, right? But, but it has a same a similar array, different capsules. Yeah. But the output on this microphone is going to be USB, okay, or eight out light pipe. And then you also have uh, binaural monitor, live binaural monitoring. But it here still has well. eight capsules. But it still has eight capsules. Oh well. Wow. And you use the same plugin to decode either microphone. There's just a setting that you choose either Dante or USB. Wow. So, so eight ninety nine um, with eight capsules. Eight ninety nine for this microphone. Twenty eight ninety nine USD for that microphone. Wow. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. I want to get one of these so I can try it. Please do. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We'll send me one. Okay. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Thank you, Warren. Good to meet you. Thank you very much for showing us that. We'll put a link down below so you can go and check it out.